And don't mind, I still does, I, hi Jason, I still have my Christmas tree up. It's been a hot minute mess of <laughs> an explosion in momentum, you all. Yes, it is still up. That is okay. You know what? Christmas brings people joy and it is okay for you to have that up. Um, unless it's stressing you out and then you need to get that down. Like no, that. but everybody keeps laughing at me the last, all the yes. like Zooms I keep, they're like, your tree's still up. I'm like, I know. <laughs> no, you're totally good. Now, if it were like Valentine's Day, I might be saying something. All right. So we are going to kick this off. We are recording. We're so excited. Um, as I was saying just a second ago, you know, I hear this all the time and I don't know why I've never thought of doing a call or a Zoom specifically on this topic. Um, because I do hear all the time, you know, people say, well, I don't want to be pushy. I don't want to be salesy. I don't want to... I don't want to force my friends to buy something. And I guess my thought, I've always just been like, I've never forced anybody to buy anything. You know, like I mm -hmm. have always just led with what it did for me. Um, mm -hmm. I literally just go with, oh my gosh, these three steps. I'm not tired. I'm not exhausted. I'm not yelling at my kids unless they deserve it. I'm not, you know, I'm not sleeping in. I'm not falling asleep at 3 a.m. I'm, I'm loving how I feel. Like I was just running with all of that. And then, oh, I was losing weight. I had to buy new clothes. Oh, I was earning money to buy the new clothes. You know, like I was just so excited and running with those things that I never, ever thought that I was pushing anyone. And I read a comment the other day that said, if, if you feel like you're, you're having to push something on someone, then you might not be believing in your products enough. And, and, and I don't know that that's the case, but it made me think, okay, I, I am so passionate about what those three steps have done that I'm just, I'm just talking about it, right? I'm just telling everyone. Oh. Yes. <laughs> so I had the uh, image. I'm going to find it, you guys. Okay. I clicked okay. Over it so I saw the image and you know, like the way, sometimes the way certain things come across in a print, it's like, uh, like that's not really what I mean, but that's what started this thought process. Right. Um, because yeah, he says the business owner told me, I don't want to push products on customers. I said, it's a shame you have products you don't believe in. And I know that here, every single one of you thrives right? If you don't thrive, raise your hand. <laughs> like every single one of you thrive, every single one of you love your three steps. You wouldn't dream of going without it. So right there, you believe in the product. You believe in what it's doing. You believe in what it can do for others. So you really need to just take that thought process of, I don't want to be pushy. I don't want to be salesy out of the equation mm -hmm. because what is it doing for you? What is that one, two, three, every single day doing for you? And you know, I, y'all hear me say a lot where I'm like, okay, think back. You know, if you, if you've forgotten what it's doing for you, think back. And you know, some people are like, well, stop taking it for a few days. And I'm like, uh, no, like I know, like that terrifies me. I'm not going to lie. It, it puts a fear in me that I don't want. Um, it, it terrifies me to think, of not taking my thrive simply because I was in such a place and I don't ever want to go back there that I don't need to not take it <laughs> to be reminded of how much I don't want to go back there. And, and so I lead with that. And of course people are like, Oh, whatever. Doesn't that, that's not going to work for me. Well, I told Maria it wasn't going to work for me too. So, you know, I get it and I just keep leading with, oh my gosh, I totally understand. I felt the same way. But what I found out was, oh my gosh, this is the best thing I've ever put in my body. You know, so you're, you're constantly, you have to be on the ready um, to, to be able to share your personal experience and feel felt found and then be able to say, you know what? I totally get it. If it's not your time, it's not your time. But girl, when you're tired of being exhausted, give me a call, you know, and, and, and move on. Cause I always leave that little thing, right? Like, Oh, well, I saw that your jeans are tight. Girl, do you want to know how I got big, smaller jeans? You know, <laughs> like I didn't need bigger jeans. I needed smaller jeans cause I got a smaller body. So that's, that's the thing. Kind of just listening, being comfortable with what to say. So I'm going to toss it, toss it over to Natasha. 
<laughs> toss it to Tasha. All right, I'm gonna toss it over to you. Let's let's kind of just bounce this off. Yeah, you know, when you sent me that image, I immediately was like, that's so true, right? It's so true. Like, I don't know what to say. You know, we get all these um these different objections or fears or blocks or whatever you want to call them. And it comes down to, I don't want to, I don't want to sell anything. Well, you know, we say we share because we truly do share our story, but you are selling something. You're selling something, whether you're with Lavelle or not, you're selling your hairdresser, you're selling your toothpaste you love, you're selling, you, we are born salespeople. We sell everything that we love that we're like, oh my gosh, you got to go check out this restaurant. Oh my gosh, you got to go you know, oh, my friend can hook you up. Like you're a connector in selling always. It's a matter of how passionate you are and how much you believe in your product or your friend or the restaurant or um, the experience, right? The confidence, the passion, the belief is what gets you out of the mindset in that thinking that you don't want to be pushy or salesy. And it also comes down to, an, you know, is not knowing how to be a salesperson without being spammy. And so it does take some learning and some following the leader. And in this business, it's pretty easy. I remember when I started, you know, I was a brick and mortar business owner. So I knew ads, but I really loved referral, right? Word of mouth referral. That meant people loved what I did and they told their friends about it. So when I got into Lavelle and, you know, Chas was, crushing it and I'm like okay I'm just gonna follow the leader I don't even know what that means really but she would post something that inspired me or got, made me smile or made me laugh or made me go gosh that's an awesome story and I just followed the leader I didn't try to figure it out I just was like you know what that's working for her so I'm gonna I'm gonna do it you know and so I went around that way but then I was like there was a point, and I think a lot of people um, started feeling, Amber, correct me if I'm wrong, but they started feeling like they were spammy when all this social media, don't post your stuff, don't post this. So immediately you start thinking, gosh, I've spammed my whole life. Like I've sp spammed everyone on social media, but have you? You know, did you just say, oh, they said not to do that anymore, so I was spammy, or was it truly spamming? Were you, you know, pulling images that were super grainy and super salesy, or were you sharing a story? Because them stories that you're sharing from the fan page are selling. You're selling the experience. You're selling that person's results. You're selling their story to those that are in need of what we have, because you're confident and you're passionate and you believe in the products. I already posted over here. I, I remember, what was that, almost four years ago, maybe three years ago now, Paul did a challenge and said, I challenge you all to stop thriving for four days. Like it was on a corporate call, like a leadership call. And we, I believe the chats went berserk going, I ain't stopping. He does, he's crazy. I ain't stopping. I ain't stopping. I mean, it went nuts. But he was serious. If you don't have belief in the product, then stop taking the product and get your belief back. Because sometimes we get too comfortable with our new normal that now we're too, so comfortable that our confidence is going down. And I, I truly believe that. And I felt that before I was like, gosh, you know, I, I'm feeling a little push. Maybe I felt that way, right, Amber? We've all kind of felt that in our journey of, gosh, I, I might be too salesy or so pushy. And I did. I. I didn't take my product one day just to get that belief back because when you are on Thrive and you really feel the lack of mental clarity, the lack of energy, and you're like, oh, I'm impatient and oh, I don't even want to go to the gym, your confidence in that product just went from new normal to I, I am confident, I know what this product does, which we all know, but if you're lacking that belief, Take a day off. I, I challenge you to take a day off because your confidence will go up and you will no longer think you're selling or being spammy. Um, but let's go deeper in that, Amber. Well, and let me just say too, let's touch on this, like what you said, you know, like if um, social media and people are saying things, right? It, I, I think back, I'm a very 
insecure person. I always, if I see two women whispering in a corner, I immediately think that they're talking about me. I think that I either have something wrong with my clothes or is my hair sticking up or, oh my gosh, they just don't like this. (laughs) But I immediately think, oh my gosh, they don't like me. They're talking about me. They're talking about my kids. They're talking like, they are talking about the fact that their daughter threw up in the back seat of the car. Mm-hmm. They are not talking about me. Like, you know, that those are the things. And so I think that because we have seen a lot on social media and we've seen, we, we see a whole lot of people that, um, you know, jump, jump on and say just ugly things, right? Like they say, oh my gosh, if one more person messages me or, oh my gosh, I don't need your this or that, you know, like we see people making those posts, but you know what? When I started realizing the same people that making those posts are the same people that just talk bad about everything. Mm -hmm. And, oh yeah. And like Mari is saying, those are the people that need it the most, (laughs) like, you know, so they're grouchy, they're grumpy, they're tired, they're broke. They probably just got a bill for softball that they can't afford. You know, I don't know. But we all need to just not take those things as it's meant for us. Because you know what? Somebody might have messaged them and said, hey, I know how you can lose 10 pounds. You look like you need it. Because I'm not going to lie. I know we don't ever say that. But I actually had a message the other day that somebody was like, hey, um, I don't even remember what it said. It said something that it basically, he called me fat, like in his thing. Like he didn't say, hey, are you looking to lose weight or anything like that? He just said, hey, I can help you lose those extra 10 pounds. I was like, I have an extra 10 pounds? Like, what? And I kind of wanted to be like, dude, let me teach you something. Um, but- Well, I would have. I would have flipped that right away. I can't, well- there was a, yeah, but I had to take a minute because I just had to get it together because I was not going to be very kind. Um, anyway, but that's what I'm saying, right? Like maybe they're putting that out there because they got something like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe they've got, you know, just crazy stuff. So anyway, let's, let's dig into that. Let's talk about one, don't stop your, your thrive thunder because somebody else is grumpy Gus, right? Like don't, don't turn around and let that just put, you know, burst your bubble, right? Like let that be like, okay, you know what? I'm going to give them a minute, but I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep running with what I know it's done for me and how to continue to do that. So Natasha, what do we do there? What do we do when we're like, okay, out. I want to run with this. I don't want to be salty. I don't want to be spammy, but I want to share my love for drive. You know, so the best thing is if it feels, so this is my personal, if I feel good about it, it's the truth. You know, I'm going to post it. I'm going to, I'm going to send the message. If I read that and I took, I put myself in the other person's shoes. So just be, and this is something I want, I want you guys to think about too, just because you get all these scripts from your leaders or Paul says some scripts on a call, I want you to put yourself on the other side of it. And how would you feel getting this message or reading this post? Does it relate to that person that's not thriving? Does it um, offend them? Does it make them go, I'm confused. Like, I don't know what you're trying to say to me. I need thrive because I'm overweight. Like you don't want to, so I always take myself and put myself on the other side and go, how would I respond to this if I was sent this? And because sometimes we just get so excited that we just go, I'm going to send this to 500 people. And yeah, that is spammy because you're not sure how it personally is going to feel. So kind of look that way and, and do it that way. And again, on the posting on social media, if you feel like you're spamming, Go take a look every, I don't, I don't care how many courses I take, how many people I learn from, how many people I follow every single Friday, I reflect back on my social media and go, where do I need to be better? How can I do better? Oh, that post, maybe I did, you know, I I might've offended somebody because I got a message or 
I didn't, I wasn't clear on my delivery of that. I wasn't, I didn't have a great call to action, right? And so when I look at those things, I just do better, right? It's not about making any of those changes, deleting things. It's about being better. You're human and you're learning. As long as you are learning, you can go from feeling spammy to being the most valuable, inspiring individual ever with your posting, your lives, your, your um, conversations, and your messages. It's a matter of belief. It's a matter of personal development and confidence, right? I remember chatting with Maria and she's like, I'm just confident. Like, I know what this product does. I'm just confident. And that right there is that confidence level that we all need to have. Because once you get there, once you have that confidence, I already seen y'all don't want to stop thriving. So um, <laughs> you, you have confidence. You have to let that shine. You got to share that confidence. And um, something I always say, and Amber, I'm going to take it back to you. Every time I message anybody, anytime I'm, re I'm talking to somebody, even if they've asked me about Thrive, and I say, I know this is what it's done for me. I don't know what it's going to do for you, but it's been awesome for me. And this may or may not be for you. Like I put that in there. So I don't, I don't have that feeling of pressuring them. And they also don't have that feeling that they can't tell me no and just ignore me and ghost me. Right. So I always put that in there. I don't know if this is for you or not, but this is what it's done for me. And this is the truth that I have lived through this journey. And, um, I'm here to answer all your questions and Hey, check out, I want you to listen to my friend Chastity's mess, my friend Chastity's story. And I will connect in a three-way chat to get that validation in there, but also reminding you that I already said this may or may not be for you. So it's that, that wall just went down. So then we can have an easy conversation and they can tell me no and not feel bad. And I can tell them everything I'm passionate about and not feel spammy or pushy. Well, and I will say, because I'm reading the um, chats and questions as you're talking and, you know, someone like, how do I, um, I know it's for somebody, but how do I share with them and not be just another product? And immediately I thought, well, I totally thought when Maria was messaging me and like, here's just another product, you know, like I immediately felt that way. Not, not because she made me feel that way, but just because it's another You've been product. Sold how many times and let down so many times, right? Well, yeah. And like for me, um, yeah. How many, another product that's not going to work, you know? And, um, and, and she just kept reaching out. Um, and you know, sometimes I didn't answer. Sometimes I did. And I was like, Hey girl, like one time I was like, Hey girl, not trying to ignore you. I'm just super busy. Oh, I understand. Busy doing what? <laughs> like, like, she's just, what you doing? And like, well, the boys are racing. Oh, what kind of racing? You know, like she was chatting with me, but then she was like, oh my gosh, that must be exhausting, you know? And I'm like, oh, it is. We're, we're busy all the time. We're go, 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 go. Girl, you just need to get this product in your body. Y'all, mm -hmm. I don't know how many times in a message she would say, girl, you just need to get this product in your body. And I finally, I was like, well, what if I do, you know? And of course, and I always say that when I did finally decide to order that I, I kind of did it in a way of, well, what if it works? But really it was, I can tell her, see, I told you these things don't work for me. And so you just never know. You never know what that other person is going to be like on the other end. You never know what, what they really need in their life. Um, but she did. I mean, I don't know how many times, like I said, girl, you just need to give this product to your body. Oh my gosh. I totally understand. You should give this product to your body. <laughs> like, like it was like, it didn't matter. That was seriously almost the end of every message, but she's right. Like how, how do they need to feel better? How, how do they need to end us selling them? If that's what they're thinking we're doing, they just need to get this product in their body. <laughs> like that's it. Right. So, you know, we, a lot of us, I know that's not really Natasha's story, but a lot of us have come from that. Oh, it's just another product. Oh, somebody's doing something else, you know? And then what happened was when we finally trusted them and we, we got on board and we placed that order, we got that product in our body we became a product of the product. We became passionate over the experience. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I probably, I'm sure my Facebook looked super salesy when I first started, 
y'all just go back and look at what we did but we didn't care we were confident we it worked you guys i did not it, care i didn't care i knew what this product was doing yes and that's the thing like i didn't care i was like throwing i put every story out there i was throwing every um little picture somebody made i'm like yes no more tired exhausted mom you know like i was putting it all out there because i was like this I was so excited about what it was doing. And all I thought was, oh my gosh, I know so many people that can benefit from this, but they just have to trust you first. Right? So mm -hmm. they can't trust somebody that's not sharing about something. They can't well, trust somebody that's not talking about it. You have you to, you know, one thing I'll, I'll say Amber with that too is do you feel, and I'm talking to all of us, do you feel salesy or spammy because you post something and nobody responds or reacts? Does that give you that feeling that you're, oh, this must be super salesy and spammy? Right? Yes. Yes. They, right. They just don't know how to answer you. They don't, they don't. Here's the thing. We, we live in such a open public life. Like social media has, people share stuff on social media. They shouldn't. Okay. But when it, <laughs> when it, <laughs> Amber almost choked on her water. <laughs> um, but when it comes to them wanting more information or like cheering you on, they don't know how to do that. They've never been cheered on. They don't know how to respond to something. They feel if they post or comment that you're going to like jump right in the inbox and like jump on them like a, like, I don't know, a tiger or something and like then be spammy and salesy and pushy. They, they don't, they don't know what's going to happen, right? It's not that they don't like you or they're excited for you. It's just like, they don't know what to do in that. So all these yeses, it's mostly because you're not getting the interaction on your post that you feel that way. So let's talk about that, Amber, real quick. Okay. Well, I will say I don't get a ton of interaction on my post. And it's funny because I will see there's some other leaders that they do get interaction on their post. And I'm always like, how do they do that? But I'm, you know, I haven't figured it out for me yet. Now, if I ask about a restaurant in Vegas, y'all go look. I literally, I posted just a little bit ago, like, hey, what's your favorite restaurant you eat in Vegas? <sighs> like blew up. Mm -hmm. But here's what that does. When you're asking questions, not about Thrive, here's what happens. You are, what, I don't even know if I need to read the text. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't need to read it then. Okay. So, <laughs> so here's what happens though. When you throw random different questions, right? Whether it's about, Hey, what's your favorite movie you just saw? It. We're going to the movies. What should we see? Hey, I'm going to this place, which guys, I do a ton of those because I want to go to different places, right? I'm not just doing it to get people to ghost and messages to thrive to. It's helpful, but I'm doing it for real, right? Like I'm doing it because I wanna know what are your favorite spring break places? Where, where should I go when I go to Chicago? You know, what should I do? Because I like to live my life off of other people's experiences, like personal experiences. What did you like? What was good? Why was it good? Oh, you like to drop really fast from a hundred stories. I'm not going to do that. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for your input though. You know, like whatever. But when those posts, when you're making those kind of posts, take note of who's commenting because all of a sudden the people that you thought were like dead and gone on Facebook, they're pitching in their, their two cents, you know? And so that's that clue for you to go, okay, I need to start paying attention to these people. Don't just go turn around and message them about Thrive the minute you ask about where do I go eat in San Francisco. But they're on your list. They're on your 54321, right? You're adding two names a day, whatever. So those, when you're doing things like that, you're bringing people to mind that you know aren't thriving. They're in your friends list. You haven't seen them post anything. So there are people that you can still relate to. So you can go and go, hey, Hey, how's it going? Thanks for that comment. What was your favorite dish there? You know, like just interact with them and, and then you're creating a relationship again, you know, and then in that relationship, 
that then opens up because I, my favorite, because what do we say? Take, take the, the social media out of the equation, right? Like take Facebook, all that out of the equation. If you ran into this person, um, at the store, mm -hmm. Hey, how's it going? What are you doing? Hey, what are you up to? Hey, what are you doing lately? Oh, I'm still living this thrive life, loving, <laughs> loving my life, you know? And, um, and I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm working nine to five. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm exhausted. Oh my gosh. We should totally catch up. I can help you with that. And then you check out at the store and you move on about your way. Right? So pretend that's what's going on in, in social media world. You're re meeting somebody you're running in, you're running into them. You're not going to immediately go, Oh, hey, great to see you. Oh my gosh, you're going to buy my thrive. Like you're not, that's not what happens when you very first run into somebody you haven't seen a bit at the store. Hey, how's it going? Hey, oh my gosh, long time no see. So what are you up to? Because whenever you ask somebody what they've been doing, they're going to ask you, then what have you been doing? Or when you're meeting someone, what do you do? What do you do? You know, so keeping that conversation going on and then you're able to then say, oh my gosh, still loving my crime, you know? So that do that in social media world, you know, keep it light, right? Like, is that the right word, Natasha? Keep it light. Don't throw up thrive. <laughs> You know, I, I keep it, it is the right word. Yeah, it is. It truly is. And, you know, my biggest thing is I want to, I want them to know that I'm a human. I'm not just this robot. Right. So I think a lot of people feel spammy and salesy because they've gotten into this robot mentality of this is what I send. This is what I send. This is what I got to do. Oh, there's another promo. I got to send this. I got to send this. Right. You just become this constant promo machine out. And then when you look, like I've done it, literally this last time the promo um, launched for the New Year's resolution, I was like, oh my gosh, this is a perfect promo for these people that, you know, are on this certain list. And I'm like, oh, I got to go over there. Well, three of them, and there was only like 19 on this list. So three of them, when I looked back at my messages to them, it was promo opportunity, promo opportunity. There was seven promo opportunities that I had messaged them. Okay that's a little salesy. So now I know that person goes on this other list and we're all going to miss these people until we start looking back on messages as we go to message them. So now they go on this, this journal side, and this is all nurturing, liking, commenting on their stuff and getting back in their notifications versus me in their inbox. Right? So I want to go into their notifications of being interested in them because no wonder they're not opening because all they hear from me is this new deal, this new deal. Obviously they don't want a deal or they would have taken the deal. So you just got to shift these people that you feel like maybe you, you've sent them too many spammy things or pushy things. And I, I think we're just excited. We're passionate. We're confident in our product and we just know what it will do for them. So there's no harm in what you've done, but no now, okay, Susie, I got to go over here and I got to nurture Susie because she didn't want my deal. <laughs> so it, it is light. It's a light conversation. And I always, always, always am like, especially if I haven't talked to somebody in a while, no matter if it's in person, it happens faster in person usually because people are, they're right there talking back and forth to you. It's like, oh my gosh, what have you been up to? They tell me what they've been up to. They're immediately going to ask me what I've been up to. And it's an easy conversation and like, oh my gosh, it's been amazing. I've been helping so many people get started on Thrive. It's the new year, all their goals. And this is just a, a catapult to help them reach their goals. So it's been an exciting time. And, you know, it's been fun watching the boys. I don't just talk about business. I'm like, and Jacoby's in soccer and we're having like so much going on there, which you know, because your kids are now grown, right? I have the Thrive conversation, but I also have life conversation. Because I don't want them to feel like there's that like, oh, all you do is work. <laughs> no, I have a life too. And then that happens over a messenger too. But it doesn't happen as fast because they might not respond as fast and they might not respond to your, their, your personal like, you know, like if I'm sitting there really interested in them, you have a, a facial expression of you're interested in wanting to hear what they have to say. Social media, you don't get that. It's just words or it's a voice message, right? 
So it happens a little slower, but it's the same steps. It's the same thing. It's what have you been up to? Oh my, was your Christmas awesome? And then they're going to go, oh yeah, what, what have you been up to, right? And here's the thing, don't get all bent out of shape when they don't ask you how you've been because we've lost the touch of human interaction. They don't know, and it's really bad for, I'm teaching my boys because I'm hoping that they're different, but it's just like all about them and then they stop conversation. There's no back and forth and it's just something that's happened through social media. Oh yeah. And, and, and that is, yeah. Cause I mean, every, they're all in a, in a phone or in whatever, like we, there's a lot of teaching going on over here, but <laughs> get your head out of your phone and, you know, <laughs> respond and, and all of that. Yes. Absolutely. Or the, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, like I, I miss talking to people. So mm -hmm. just know that that's happening all over. Yes. Yes. So you can sometimes pull it out of people you know, you, you kind of just have to wait and, and pop on in there the next day or something, if you're trying to pull it out of them. Um, okay. So Natasha, we want to keep this not too long, short and sweet. We've been right at 30 minutes. Um, a lot of people well, want to know, wanna know your let's list. cover this real quick. How do you track it? Yeah. Well, and, and your list, cause I think here's the thing on tracking guys. I, have multiple ways because I still haven't found the perfect way. Um, I, I'm not a spreadsheet person that and Natasha is. Um, I'm not a spreadsheet person that I've tried. It, it, it doesn't do well for me. Um, I'm a pen and paper person. Um, I do better when I give those people's sections, whether it's in a notebook or you want to use a recipe box. Mitzi Driver has a great um, video for a recipe box where she keeps the index cards handy and you just go through every um, day and everybody goes back in, you know, seven days or whatever. So there's, there's a lot of things in the post-it challenge um, that Beth Graves, is, was it Beth Graves did the, the sticky notes? Okay. So like, there's a lot of different ways to track. And, and one thing is I'll say, don't, don't stress out about the right way to track. Just start with, yeah, start with a pen and paper and start writing them down, keeping track of them because you start, literally you can start with just a spiral notebook and that is how I start because in the very beginning y'all and don't, don't tell yourself that you're going to remember that you message somebody oh. because <laughs> In the beginning, <laughs> I might have done that. And then I had to go back and scroll through all my messages to get back um, to remember who I did and didn't message. And yeah, that was awful. So anyway, so just write it down, right? Write it down, put it somewhere and go back and you'll know when you message them. Oh, I talked to them on January 14th about Thrive. Okay. On January 20th, checked in with their kids. January 22nd, hey, girl, are you still exhausted? You know, like whatever, like just keep track, um, however that works for you. Um, Natasha, so what kind of categories do you do your, your list? Okay, so I am a pen and paper kind of person. And if you have not done it, minimum a hundreds list, that's where you start at minimum. And there's called memory joggers that you can literally grab and just do it. But I am, I am literally in the, in the doing writing down 600 contacts that are not thriving. So I am going on a big push and I am like doing it in 30 days, but I'm writing these names down. I'm starting from my phone contacts and then I'm going into my Facebook friends list. Okay, so two lists right there. And then you have your email list. You have all these other lists, right? You have a lot of people to talk to. Now from this list, I'm reaching out to them with just a simple, hey, how's things going? Hey, haven't chatted with you in 10 years. Oh my gosh, I haven't talked to you in 20 years since we graduated, right? All those things. Just to start conversation, unless I've already in conversation with them. Once I'm in conversation with them, they go on a cold list, a warm list, and they're my hot list. Like I have three, three lists, cold, they're warm and they're hot. They've hot means they've asked something. 
they've had interest, they haven't actually purchased yet. So people that go on my cold list are also people who view my stories daily, but have never responded, reacted, or commented on anything. So they're watching, they're on my cold list. And if I see them watching for a while, I keep seeing that name pop up, I move them to my warm list. They haven't asked anything, but they are actively watching. That's an action they're taking. So that's where I'm gonna nurture these. I'm gonna really nurture these warm and hot leads as much as possible. And literally, my there are three colors. So I buy legal pads, and I have pink means hot, blue means warm. I have my blue one here. I'm not even joking, you guys. Like, this is what's on my desk. Blue means warm. It's just warm and the white one is cold. So I had to color code it that way. I don't go into detail of, oh, I messaged them on the 15th. I messaged them this and this and this. I just see their, their name on there and I go, oh, I haven't, I'm going down the list. They're next. I go check out the messages. What have we chatted about? Check out their Facebook and then send a message. So I do it that way. It's less. So, but I have my list and then they go cold, warm, hot. I love it. Okay, so that's great. So that way, guys, you know, don't overthink it. It doesn't have to be in some massive list. But like, also remember, like what she said is that um, whenever she goes to send somebody a promo message, when she realizes all she's done is promo message them, well, now she knows I need to spend some more time with this person, not just sending them. And I an have a, I have a small journal right. Um, mm -hmm that I, it's kind of like my nurture. It's the people I've over spammed. I want to nurture them. So right. they're, they're on another list and there's not a ton of them guys. You think you've spammed people, but you really haven't. Yeah. That, and, and you realize right? Like if all, if you haven't talked, when you see you go to message them, you're like, oh, they didn't answer me. Oh, they didn't answer me that. Oh, they didn't answer me that. Oh, all I told them was sorry. So, you know, and, and it happens, right? Um, and so those are the ones that you're like, I really need to just reach out. Go, go take a minute. Look at their Facebook. Oh my gosh, your Christmas pictures were adorable. Oh my goodness. Where did you go? Um, I saw some awesome snowball fights. Where were y'all at? You know, just talk, right? Like, yeah. And a lot of times if they haven't responded in messenger, I won't message them again. I will just go react like crazy on their not like a spammer. I'm going to give you this tip because people do this. You know, that person that goes to your Facebook, they might've just friended you and they heart, 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 comment, 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 comment. All of a sudden you open up your notifications and that person's name is like, and you're like, stalker. Bye. That's my mom. <laughs> but they do it fast. So don't go do that. But, just know they're on your warm list or nurture list. Go over there once or twice a week. Not crazy, but just keep showing up every now and then in their inbox. And then it won't feel so bad when you go to message them after promo, after promo, after promo. Yeah, because, okay, so here's the thing is, you know, you don't think about it, but especially if you're doing it all in a row or whatever, your notification does show up. Because Jason and I joke, like, love my mom, obviously, right? But we joke about how she, she logs in every few days. And so when she does, she just goes and she like, la, 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 comes, 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 everything. So my notifications for a good five minutes are my mom, Barbara hangs this, Barbara hangs it, Barbara hangs it, you know, and it's the same. And so, so you don't want to show up in somebody's <laughs> notifications like that. You know, you, if you don't know what that looks like, I'm telling you what it looks like now. So you've seen it. You might not have recognized it, but you've seen yes. it. <laughs> yes. Okay. So. Cool. Here's the thing, guys, what has Thrive done for you? What, what would you feel like or do if it was taken away from you? As long as you're sharing what it's doing for you. Are you sharing from the Lavelle Facebook fan page? Are you letting people know there's a call? Oh my gosh, you've heard my story. Go listen to these, um, these girls that are on on Tuesday night. Go check out their story. I just want to see if you have a connection with anyone. You know, like, are you sharing from the funnel or did you stop? Like, it's easy to get out of habit, right? If you slow down. So just go back and be reaching out, share your story, share why it's, why you're passionate about it. 
Um, you know, if somebody wants to knock your product, just be like, you know what? I don't know about that. What I know is what's done for me and you share what it's doing, right? Don't debate. Don't argue. You don't have to like prove some facts. What do you know? What do you know what Thrive is doing? What do you know what Thrive has done? Natasha, what's your last 60 seconds on that? I, this is what I say, and I posted it in the comments. I never want to go back to how I felt and who I was August 15th of 2012. That was the day before I started thriving. I mean, it's the truth. I mean, that is, I won't go back to that. And so when you know the truth, you are confident, you are passionate, you are caring, and you truly will share that message in a non-spammy salesy way. You will share it with compassion and empathy for the person that you're talking to because you know what they're going through. You've been there. I relate. I understand. I totally get it. I remember those nights of sleepless nights. I remember going to the gym, having aches and discomforts. If you can take yourself back to that day that you never want to go back to, you will be so much more relatable and empathetic and you will have compassion and you will share your story to a level that will never, ever, ever, ever make you feel like you're pushy or salesy. And that's it. Thank you so much, guys. Um, I'm excited. Thanks for jumping on. We had a great crowd tonight. Thank you, Natasha. You know, the thing is when, like she said, when you're passionate about something, it just, shows right like I, people always ask me well how how are you so successful with thrive i'm like i don't shut up about thrive like i'm just it it is just part of me right like even talking about our kids or talking about our day or when i'm like oh i did this 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 today and i like count all the things i did on my fingers i look back and go whoo thanks for thrive and then they're like wait how what did that have to do with all the things you did today i'm like well, it kept me doing all the things i did today you know so it just it works in right so anyway Thank y'all so, so much. I'm super excited for the rest of this week. Guys, go out there and rock it out. Good night. Bye.